G'day, my name is Brandon Clift with the Mankind Project USA and here in Chattanooga, Men Who Chat and I'm joined with... My name's Alex McGrath, I play centre midfield for Chattanooga Football Club and it's great to be here with Brandon and hopefully we'll have a, a good chat. Yeah, it's nice to be with a fellow Commonwealthian, that's not even a word, but we <laughs> kind of get each other, you know, kind of yeah. British and English culture, like we understand, our, you know, our culturally our upbringings might have been kind of similar. I understand that you've come from a quite a working class town and, and, and area of, of the United Kingdom and, and I myself in Australia, there's got this, there's this kind of attitude, I believe, when it comes to men and talking about emotions where it's just an area that you don't really cover. Mm -hmm. What was your experience like growing up in the north of England uh, as a boy, as a man, and the messages you received about that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those where obviously uh, you don't really talk about it. It's just something that you, you totally get on with. And yeah, you have people here and there who try and push in the right direction to, to open up a little bit. But growing up, you at school, playing football, whatever sport you're playing, it's not really spoke about. So it's something that you sort of have to try and figure out yourself. So I understand a lot about what it's like where, you know, I think especially for us, like generally, I don't know if you're on the, the tail end of millennial or the early part of the Gen Z, but generally for our generation, these conversations around mental health were starting to prop up here and there. But I think even for us, it was quite rare, especially at school or on the, on the field, to be having any conversations around this stuff. So culturally, you know, you mentioned about how it's just something you just didn't talk about. What was your experience in growing up or as an adolescent when you did go through challenges or struggles? How did you learn to cope? Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those where obviously in generations in the past, it's probably been talked about even less. So I think I've been on the borderline of having a, some support. Um, to answer your question, it's probably... It's one of those where to start with, you try and figure it out yourself. And then I was lucky I had obviously my parents, my, my dad to talk to, but still you probably wouldn't go that deep in conversation about it. It would just be very basic. And then even from my dad's point of view, he probably grew up in that generation where you don't talk about it. So he probably didn't really know how to help too much. Um, so it's one of those where I think that eventually for me, like certain things, it probably it got to a point where it maybe went a bit too far. What went too far? Just in terms of like the situation you found yourself in, it was never like stopped early. It had to be something that was like really affecting you to well, eventually, right. yeah, to eventually yeah. realize, oh, I maybe need to do something here. Yeah. Um, and I think the earlier you can probably speak about it, but that's that's the hardest thing is obviously speaking about it, and different people have different thing different things that they're always going through so it's hard for me to say like something that might work for me might work for someone else so I think that's it was almost just to figure it out by yourself mm. but at the point where it was starting to really impact your life yeah what was the risk in speaking about it in your mind at the time um again it's probably that stigma of it and yeah. you never talk about it with your mates like you, you never got that deep in conversation you just you turn up to school you turn up to, to play football cricket whatever it was and that's what you were there to do it wasn't like uh, you never felt like you needed a shoulder to cry on because you never wanted to get to that point where like yeah. oh he's weak he's he's crying or he's talking about something that yeah. would never come up in a social environment so when you're spending every day with with your mates and with different people like it's just a topic that, that would never come up Mm -hmm. so definitely uh, I think for many boys and men and, and you know you shared with me before we sat down for this interview that you come from a family of coal miners right and so very kind of in, very industrial town and yeah th there wasn't a lot of room for feelings when it was we need to put meals on the table mm -hmm. right and it seems like now even though that there are those certainly that have that same fear of like, how are we going to get food on the table? The resources now are coming up and are becoming available for people from, from many backgrounds to get access to a professional or to a community that they can talk about these things. 
However, it's not going to happen if we're not encouraging the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I believe having role models like yourself with, you know, little kids to many people older than you who are watching you on the field, right? Sports stars are, are, are idols. I can certainly remember mine growing up. You know, you're modeling to them that it may feel risky, but there's real no, there's no real inherent danger to talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we can destigmatize it and we can normalize it so that when we get it up and out, now we can do something about it mm -hmm. right? rather than shove it down, hide it, repress it, deny it. And you shared that just a second ago about just trying to go at it alone. The uh, Culturally, I feel like men and boys have been um, kind of given that lead that if you're a real man, you take it on the chin. Mm -hmm. If you're a real man, you'll rub dirt in it. Because if you do show weakness, you are xyz label that was thrown around some pretty horrible ones that you may recall and i certainly recall um but now we're starting to find the detrimental impacts of that i want to ask you as an athlete role models can you think of who yours were as a little kid getting into sport yeah i mean obviously i'm a big uh, sunderland fan so at the time uh, the reason i wear 33 actually is a player called julio arca who um, played for Sunderland um, when I was growing up, and he was just my favourite player. Like, um, so sport-wise, obviously, I looked up to him. Um, thankfully, I had me me dad, and I just always had a, a good relationship good relationship with him. Thankfully, um, but still, like, not one where you could talk about yeah. stuff that deep, to be honest. Um, and just to go back quickly, like, on you on what you said about those different stigmas I was probably guilty of it in a way even at school because yeah you're trying to keep all your stuff inside but in that environment where someone might be maybe a gymnast or, or whatever it is just that culture like and everybody's sort of I don't know everyone's almost pushing that feeding or into yeah feeding into it or you're yeah, not like a, you're not a man that's weak yeah. whatever it is and you're probably guilty of, of falling into that I, yeah. I certainly was and again that's probably part of the problem because you never really had that when you're younger you don't really have that full view of what someone else has gone through it's just seen as this is right this is wrong we're going to go with this especially as a, a young boy and um not that that was passed down from anyone in particular but I think it was just the generational thing and then that's how that's how everyone saw it and so for me like thinking back now it's I was probably guilty of that as well which definitely doesn't help the issue but I feel like it's just a probably a cycle of yeah. continuous not sure what the right word is but just a continuous cycle of yeah. people going around and just being not bullies but like having a certain view on something it, and it's, it's hard to sh yeah it is it's a script it's hard to shift yeah, yeah. that view especially when you're in yeah. the environment with yeah. everybody sort of thinking the same way yeah i think if we zoom out and we look at just young boys in general and then young boys are just absorbing everything around mm -hmm. them in their environment you know it's nature and nurture nature the environment that they're raised in and then the nurture who's their role models mm -hmm. who, who's their caretakers is it a parental figure is it a coach and so these young boys are just figuring things out trying to absorb as much information as possible so that they can survive so that they can connect and for me i i perpetrated uh so in in my line of work we talk about what's called the man box the unspoken rules of manhood that that you have to abide by you have to perpetrate you have to maintain in order to be worthy as a man to, to call yourself a man and that is things like you know don't show weakness be powerful uh be the man uh don't be gay don't be any of these things and that was the script mm -hmm. growing up little did i know as someone who bought into it and perpetrated it the harm that it caused uh, Go to any playground, talk to little kids. What's the worst thing you can be called? And little boys will tell you a girl. Mm -hmm. And if we're teaching little boys that the worst thing that they can be is a girl, what's that teaching them about the value of girls and women? Mm -hmm. That's just one of the scripts yeah. of how to be in the man box. Do you recall? Mm -hmm. like, was that?
Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. And like I said, it even you can remember. I can go back and remember myself doing the same thing, and it's just one of those where you don't realize the, in, the impact, especially as a as a young kid. It's thankfully now seeing well having different experiences and seeing different cultures and meeting a lot of different people it it opens your eyes to that and the impact it, it can have so I think that's something as you get older I've been lucky that I've been able to see that but if you don't have those experiences and you may be stuck in that little little box you, you, you're always going to think the same way so it's it's definitely hard to get out of and I mean hopefully these conversations even though, like I said before, everyone's experience is different. Hopefully, it gets people just to think slightly differently to what the norm is. And um, but ultimately, I think having those experiences and meeting people who've had completely different upbringings to you and different struggles and some extreme struggles that definitely opens your eyes to wow. Like there's a lot more to take in than just what's going on in your head. Yeah, and hundred percent. You know what I'm loving about this conversation, Alex, and what I love about most of these conversations that, that we get to have is it's easy to think back to the things that I said or did or was a victim of as a kid and feel shame around that mm -hmm. and judge myself for how I showed up. But conversations like this allow me the perspective, like you're just talking about not knowing, like not knowing what everyone's going through, the perspective to go like, wow with awareness of that how can i show up differently and i'm telling you man becoming a parent was probably one of the biggest like crucibles of men now my actions have far greater implications than just what knocks under my my life or my wife's life it's we have a child now yeah and i have a daughter and i'm thinking man like how how uh, am i how is my generation setting up young girls in the world young boys as well and so for, i think for anyone listening to this conversation who may be feeling those same feelings of like man i was a i was a bit of a jerk or you know i perpetuated the man box or policed it and you can stop <laughs> and you can stop you can model a different behavior and by having conversations like this and destigmatizing conversations like this we're giving our young boys and young girls a breadth of perspective and a different way to look at what it means to be a boy or to be a man um so grateful to have someone like yourself alex who is on the field i'm sure there are many young kids with a 33 jersey on just looking up to you and you're showing them the power of having a conversation like this it doesn't mean that you're any weaker as a person or on the field in fact it shows your strength mm -hmm. in doing so so mate this is this is fantastic and i'm, I'm grateful for this time with you yeah well i mean I think it's like we said it's great to to speak about it but the speaking is yeah. the hardest part and um, even little things like this I know we mentioned it before before we were um on the video here but just little things like opening up and having little chats even with your mates like as much as you don't realize it's like a, it's not a therapy session but those little bits of advice maybe here and there are just someone to to hear what you have to say i think that that goes a long way and not everyone has that opportunity and not mm -hmm. everyone is probably at that point in their life where they're willing to do that so yeah. I, I just hope that yeah these little things we speak about hopefully if it gets to one person and they maybe go and speak to a friend or speak to anyone or just have a have a bit of a deeper think about the thoughts i mean it's not going to solve something yeah. but you never know it could it could push them in the right direction often it's just a bid for connection mm -hmm. it's a bid for connection and to, to to think am i alone and if i connect with someone and take that risk to share something i might be going through to find out like i i am i'm naive to think that i'm the only person who's ever experienced mm -hmm. this right sure no one can walk in my shoes but as a father as a husband there are others who have been through many experiences that can go even if you're not looking for advice, just to go, yeah, that sounds tough. Mm -hmm. I get it. And that takes, I know for me, it takes me out of that. I have to walk alone. I have to do this alone. I have to figure this out on my own. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, I can't solve my problems in my life at the same level that I created them. Like, so for me to take something into my cave to try and fix is just, 
idiocy mm -hmm. <laughs> when I can speak to someone or speak to a professional that can help me unpack these things and, and kind of get them out. Mm -hmm. uh, wanted to ask you a bit of a deeper question. You shared with me a little bit before we went on that you were able to identify some mental health challenges that, that you have overcome and worked through in your, you know, in your earlier life and that has helped you in your professional career and you know, as a husband. So do you mind talking just a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I will say before, obviously, I know we've mentioned multiple times, like what I've gone through is obviously completely different to what you've gone through and everyone always has the challenges, some of them very extreme. Like I'm probably lucky to, to say that I've been able to work through a few things and yeah, it's took a bit of time, but I just hope that people who are going through real extremes in, in mental health, whether it's men or women, I mean, it's just something that is a really hard topic and there's people obviously going through much worse things than what I've been through, but then I think everybody has those individual things that you maybe don't think are as big in your mind, but as we spoke about before, eventually, even if it's a little thing, it can boil over into something that is a bit debilitating. Um, so I did have, I mean, I probably still do, I have like a lot of OCD tendencies, which some have, have actually helped me, but then some got to the point where it was like ruining my life and ruining where I think I was going and just how I was feeling in general. And it was one of those where it's hard to say exactly why I was doing it because at the time I I didn't know and I was just a, a young a young boy trying to figure out how to become a man and turning into sort of that's right yeah. a different stage of of my life and yeah it was just something that it was even hard to talk to me dad about just mm -hmm. because again you never want to show that oh, I don't want my dad to think I'm just making stuff up or I think I'm yeah. maybe weaker than what i'd see myself in his eyes but yeah i think it was the the big thing that helped me was eventually going to speak to someone who was a professional which it took a lot of time like it took years of going through all of this and getting to a point where i was sort of a little bit suffocated by it um and then thankfully speaking to someone just speaking just being able to and i'll never forget the first time i ever went and spoke to you call him a therapist but I think that's sometimes like a, that's almost a, a stigma in itself as well. But just having someone to speak to and lay your so-called problems mm -hmm. out helps you try and work work your way through them. And I'll never forget after the first time of going, like it felt like a weight mm -hmm. off my shoulders, and it gave us a different perspective to look at mm -hmm. the issues I was having. Yeah, it didn't solve them straight away, but it was it was such a big yeah. step. You could kind of like see yeah. the bigger picture all yeah. of a sudden. And Instead of, like you said, taking path. it to your cave and just it builds and builds and builds to the point a where... very well-organized cave, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. It was Everything was nice and neat, but <laughs> still yeah. a disaster at the same time. Sure. Um, but yeah, that was a big thing and talking. And then from there, I was able to speak to my dad a little bit more because I was able to open those, open those things up yeah. a little bit. And even now to this day, like, you still have things you you struggle with and Taylor my wife she tries her best to stay on top of things and even though it is difficult she'll see us dropping back into those tendencies which which happens it's always mm -hmm. going to be there but I think just being able to build a bit of a defense yeah. defense mechanism against it that's that's helped us a lot to put it into a different perspective and like I said sometimes it is sometimes it can be helpful because it's who I am at the end of the day and I have those tendencies for a reason and a lot of them do help me be successful but then it gets to the point where it's such a, a thin line of where that's helping me and then it goes maybe a little bit over the edge sure. and then it's just this you is, get into that cycle of, of being a disaster again. I, so. I think it's a, a good segue here to talk about resilience mm -hmm. because I know talking to older generations and, you know, me being in the mental health space, I'm talking all the time with parents. Mm -hmm. I'm talking all the time to my seniors and those that come from a different generation who they themselves were raised by World War One veterans who, are mm -hmm. raised, who made it through uh, huge economic challenges and, yeah. and 
different times necessitated a different attitude, right? A different identity. And so generally older generations have a harder time digesting the fact that young people are needing to have these conversations because for some there's more abundance now for resources and opportunities than they had or their Mm -hmm. parents had. And yet we've got more conversation happening around mental health and mental health statistics are getting worse while we're also, you know, talking about it more. Yeah. And I feel like a big part of the conversation that's missing is resilience. So you spoke about the OCD going like you judged it to be this debilitating negative thing that was impacting your life in a horrible way. But through seeing a professional and learning about it, you're able to identify it actually helps me in many other ways. Like it it has kind of a polarity to it. Mm -hmm. And I know from speaking to, you know, through people, through the men who chat men's circles and I meet some of the most resilient individuals and I hear their stories and I go, I could never imagine making it out of a situation they've been through, but it's because they went through that. It's because they went through the struggle they've come out the other side stronger for it. Mm-hmm. As an athlete, you understand going, you need to put your body through physical and mental duress to get stronger. Tear the fibers, they get stronger, your performance improves, your mm-hmm. strength, agility, all the rest. So how important do you think it is that conversations that, like this that we're having eventually steer towards proactive actions and, and engagement to be able to move forward? Yeah, I think it's obviously a bit of a tough question, but I think you always, you probably do always need that adversity. Yeah, you don't want it to a point where it's it's too, too much, much of yeah, it's it's a really hard thing yeah. to get out of. But no, I mean, sports obviously similar to any other walk of life when it comes to business, what whatever, whatever it is, there's always going to be those challenges to overcome and whatever's happened in the past there's still so many things that can happen in the future um that you don't foresee that could be worse or could be better than what you've been through in the past and I think the big thing about resilience and what's also helped me a little bit is like looking back to those people who have went through things to to put me in a position like we said before like a lot of my family worked in a lot worse circumstances than what I have and I almost have them to thank Mm. for me being able to have the opportunity to to play football to come to America and pursue something different instead of having to work purely and simply just to just to survive so Mm. and and every everyone has that and I know that's different um among different cultures and it's it's hard for me to to comment on on everything because like i said i don't have that perspective of another, what different cultures yeah exactly yeah, whether yeah, that's yeah. culture creed whatever that is um mm-hmm. but that that also helped me of thinking look if they've been through that and maybe not spoke about it in the dark days that they've had mm-hmm. to sort of push me out on the other side um but yeah, if you could, could you remind me just of the the question that you? Yeah, no. Um, so so talking about, I, I can tee it up this way. There's, I believe, an importance when it comes to facing any mental health challenge mm-hmm. that someone might be going through. To, and I'm very intentional in saying challenge as opposed to struggle, because when you know, I guess you're an athlete, I'm an athlete, and when I when I think of challenge, I'm like, like mm-hmm. oh, it's time to level up. Like it's something to to overcome. And it's very, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, necessity in getting clear on what is occurring. So say it's OCDs, for others it might be depression, others it might be anxiety, to go, okay, how is it impacting my life? How did we get here? What lived experience has informed me that it's kind of put placed me in this place? But to not get stuck there, right? To, to have... A, a kind of uh, a gearing towards all right with this awareness knowing that i'm not going to fix it tomorrow mm-hmm. what is a way that i can put my left foot in front of my right foot and then what do you know like you're doing the reps again you know getting stronger so yeah as opposed to a question it's kind of just that kind of conversation of like is that where your mind goes is okay this is a challenge i'm 
<laughs> something to overcome. Yeah, I think I suppose that yeah, you have to be like that, especially within sport. Like, because if you if you stay still, <laughs> there's a million people who would probably happily take your place. So you've always got to feel like yeah at least trying to claw in the right direction even if sometimes you feel like you're not moving at least if you're trying to be proactive with something whether it's as basic as maybe i don't know you're working on practicing your penalties mm. it's the same same sort of concept to where something you want to improve on at least if you're putting the effort in even if you're not successful straight away if you're at least trying to make a change i think that's the first step in kickstarting everything um which i think most people would do naturally in in most walks of life like i think it's easy to relate it to sport because you can either see the impact on the field or you can see the opposite and maybe right that's not working for him so it's it's one of those where it's like sport it's maybe a little bit easier to to visualize because you can see a goal you can see a good pass you can see someone working hard whereas maybe in normal life it's a little bit yeah. harder for people to to see what someone's working on or what what they're going through so that's that's a tough thing and i mean from my experiences it's having having that that wider view of every everything and taking the time to get there like it's still i mean i say experiences i'm still young compared to a lot of people and have completely different experiences of other people but I think you can still connect the dots between different environments and different workplaces to what's working what's not yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so so what is your what is your hope from having a conversation like this and and for, for others perhaps little fans of mm -hmm. Chattanooga Football Club or Alex McGrath like what what, are, what is your hope for us having sitting down having this conversation and how it might knock onto others I mean, my hope is just that people listen to it. And like I said, I'm not definitely not here to like give advice. I don't think it's my place for that. But hopefully if people can at least look at something slightly different, whether they're a young kid growing up in the Northeast and have those thoughts and those stigmas surrounding other people, that there is a a lot going on on the outside from that little bubble that, Oh, maybe that's not that's not the right way to think. Maybe I have to change how what I say because of the impact it might have on someone else. And I mean, it's it's funny to say that. And obviously, I don't have the following like my hero did growing up. Obviously, playing for Sunderland. But the fact that you do see kids wearing a shirt with thirty three and my name on the back, which is pretty incredible. And as an athlete, that's something you always strive for like you always want to be playing on a, a yeah. bigger stage and thankfully at Chattanooga we have a great fan base and it was funny someone actually texted me yesterday um just to say like thanks and you're having a real impact on our kids which I, I, I wouldn't like I don't sit at home thinking oh my god I'm having this unbelievable you just you don't think <laughs> about that but then when someone says it, I mean for me that's incredible to hear and hopefully the impact I can have is positive and, and continues to to grow and especially because we're having this conversation about mental health and being a bit more open to certain things I think the earlier you can try and do that the better it definitely would have helped me and I think it's something I can always continue to work on because there's, there's going to be things in the future that I don't want to think about but there's obviously going to be adversity and I think having a bit of a network because it's not just me it's even this conversation with you I think having that network and whether it's coaches whether it's other people involved in the club whether it's mm. your, your, your parents whether it's just a good friend like if you can try and have a bit of a network to maybe you, even if you just speak to your mate about one thing that doesn't seem too like deep but it, it might unlock something else for you to then go and see see if you can speak to someone maybe a little bit yeah. I don't know seek some extra help from just that little conversation so I think that I don't know if anyone takes anything away from it I don't want it to be like oh he's trying to give advice 
on something he doesn't know anything about. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know yeah, what I'm going you through. You know you and your lived experience. Yeah. It may not connect to one person watching, yeah. and there may be someone else sitting there going, man, I yeah. feel like that's me sitting in that chair. Yeah. And that's the beauty of these conversations. You do not know the impact it's going to have on someone, yeah. whether it's one person or countless others. Mm -hmm. Just like you don't know, you didn't know what impact you were having mm -hmm. on kids. Yeah. You know, just by chucking on the jersey and showing up the best way you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which that is a good way to put it. And yeah. like I said, if it does change someone's mindset slightly and just opens one conversation, I mean, I'd be I'd be happy with that. No matter where that conversation goes, I think that's the purpose of being able to talk like this. And obviously everything you've done the past, I was going to say past eight years with the company, but your whole life, I mean, it's something that you've obviously committed a lot to. And I think it's it's fantastic to help as many people as possible hopefully shift that mindset a little bit and enjoy enjoy the life well said well said well we're all human beings at the end of the day just figuring life out and you know it's not about having a black belt and mental health conversations at the end of the, it's just showing up as the best person you can be for yourself first and then as a husband or a father or an uncle or a son or a role model or, or whatever it is by having these conversations you said it very well it's you have you have something with you as you face challenges in the future you have extra tools you have extra support you got people in your corner that'll support you and help you when the when the storm kind of rolls in so alex mcgrath mate it's been an absolute pleasure getting to speak with you and uh yeah i hope it's not the last i'm sure no, it no, won't no, be and i'm grateful to all of you that have joined us today i've been brandon clift with men who chat here in chattanooga and the mankind project usa and this is just one of many conversations that we're going to be having over the weeks to come, over the months to come, to prove that it's not weak to speak. Real men do feel, and there's more than one way to be a man. And we're proving that by having conversations like this. So your homework now going forward is to perhaps take a risk, stand on a skinny branch, reach out to someone who might be going through a challenging time. Don't fix their problem for them or don't even go in it with wanting to offer advice, but just be there to listen and remind them they're not alone. We as blokes do not have to travel through life alone and we all have a broad spectrum of lived experience that we can learn from from each other. So, mate, till next time. Thank you.